In the previous video, we saw that there are cases in which the moment chosen by Genexus to execute a rule is not the one we need, so we must be able to tell the rule which is the right moment. We studied the case in which we needed to control that each flight had at least eight registered seats. Since Genexus executed the rule before giving the user time to register the seats, we had to delay the moment it had initially chosen to trigger it, using the on after level triggering moment with a line attribute flight seat char. In this way, we managed to have the rule triggered after running through the level associated with the seats. We also mentioned that there were other triggering moments, such as on before insert, if we wanted to do or evaluate something immediately before the data from the header or each line is inserted in the database. The on after insert moment to indicate that the rule be triggered immediately after the insertion of each header or line. And the on after complete moment, which corresponds to the moment immediately following the commit, a command whose purpose is to validate the data inserted, modified, or deleted. In this video, we'll take a closer look at these triggering moments. But first, Let's remember that some rules are validated both on the client, the browser, and on the server, and others are validated only on the server because they have to do with the database. For example, if we had an error rule that prevented us from entering or modifying a flight without a price, as soon as we left that field, the error message would appear. This happens because the client performs the validation to provide a good user experience responding to them in an agile way so that they feel their interaction with the system is seamless. This validation performed on the client side is called client side validation. But this rule will be executed again later on the server since it's the server that ensures that there are no security violations and it's the only one allowed to operate on the database. So it must ensure that all the logic is consistent. It'll execute all the rules again when it has all the information. This happens after the user presses the confirm button. There, the data travels from the web client, browser, to the web server, and the server runs through the form again from top to bottom as if it were a user. So all the rules and formulas will be triggered again in the order corresponding to the attributes of the form with which they are associated. In addition, all the rules that have an associated triggering event, in other words, that have the on prefix at the end of their statement, will be executed at the moment corresponding to that event. These events only take place on the server and capture the moment before or after a milestone, which is usually related to the database. Which are those milestones? Let's say, for the sake of simplicity, that we're inserting a flight. In this order, Validate the header record to be inserted to make sure that the referential integrity and duplicate controls did not fail. It happens after having gone through each field of the header and after having triggered each associated rule at the end of it all. Insert the header record in the corresponding table. Then we do the same for each line. Validate the record of the line to be inserted it makes sure that the referential integrity and duplicate controls did not fail. Insert the line record in the corresponding table. At the end of this process, where both the record corresponding to the header and those corresponding to all the lines have been inserted in the database, the next milestone is when you finish working with the level. And the next one is the commit action which validates all these operations on the database, making them permanent. So, we have events that capture the moment before or after these milestones, so that we can execute rules at those precise moments. At present, in the flight transaction, we've defined the flight identifier, flight ID, as auto-numbered. If, in real life, 
As is usually the case, the flight identifier is made up of letters and numbers depending on the airline, departure, and destination. The numeric and auto-numbered flight ID attribute is of no use to us. So let's suppose we have a procedure called return flight ID, which we can invoke to be run and return the identifier to be assigned to a new flight. We'll study the procedure object later, so you cannot, at the moment, reproduce what we'll show here. If we write the rule shown above, where we're calling and assigning its result to the flight ID attribute, when will it be triggered? As soon as you open the transaction or want to edit a pre-existing flight. We do not condition the triggering of the rule to the mode, so it'll be executed regardless if the user is accessing the flight transaction to insert, modify, or delete a flight, when in fact, we want the procedure to be invoked only if we're inserting a new flight. It's also worth pointing out that if we were in the flight transaction in update mode, in other words, if the flight already existed and we were only modifying it, we would not be able to change the value of the flight identifier, as the primary keys cannot be modified. If we need to change a primary key, we have no choice but to create a new record with a new key value and delete the old one. So, we condition the rule to be executed only when you want to insert data. Since the transaction opens in that mode, the rule that's assigning a value to the attribute is already being triggered before anything has been done. But it could happen that after completing the header data and some lines, we have to cancel the entry for some reason to do it later. When we try it again, we see that it'll give us another flight number. The reason is that we had asked for a number from the procedure that we didn't use in the end, and that number was lost. To make sure we don't waste a number that we won't use, how about calling the procedure that gives the number after the commit, because at that moment, we're completely sure that everything will remain in the database. Mm, nope, that's too late. Why? Because flight ID is an attribute of the header. The last moment to assign it a value is the one immediately before the record is inserted in the database. And that moment is before insert. We no longer need to condition to if insert because the triggering event already takes into account that it will only happen if we want to insert data. If we run it, we see that it no longer assigns a number to the ID right away. It doesn't even do that when we enter lines. Only after we confirm, all this information goes to the server, and it starts executing all the referential integrity controls and rules as it validates each field. When it finishes with those of the header, after having validated everything, the before insert event occurs. This is where it assigns the number, and immediately afterwards, the record is inserted in the flight table. Then it goes on to validate each field in line one, and inserts it, next, those in line two, and inserts it, and so on. Note that the rule will not be triggered before every line is recorded. This rule will only be triggered in the before insert of the header. Why? Because in the rule, we define there is an attribute that belongs to the header. If we define a rule to which we also add the on before insert triggering event, but unlike the previous example, the rule contains a reference to at least one attribute of the second level of the transaction, it'll be associated with the second level. Therefore, it'll be executed immediately before each instance corresponding to the second level of the transaction is physically saved. So we could say that even though the name of the event, before insert, is the same, they are actually two different ones. Either it's the before insert of the header, or the one that applies to the lines. Let's see an example of before insert for the lines. Suppose we want the value for the flight seat location attribute. 
rather than being chosen by the user working with the transaction, to be assigned by a rule, which sets it to window, when the value of the flight seat char attribute is A or F, medium, when the value of the flight seat char attribute is B or E, and aisle, when its value is C or D. Let's make it clear that we could solve this without using triggering events, and it would be even better because the user would immediately see on the screen the value of the seat location, as the rule would be executed immediately on the client. However, just to understand the triggering moment, imagine that we would be interested in making this assignment only if we were sure that the seat was going to be entered on the flight, that is, immediately before inserting the line. We'll use the no accept rule to prevent the user from choosing the location. Add the value empty to the location domain and create the following rules. Let's insert a new flight from Guarulhos Airport to Charles de Gaulle Airport with a price of 4000 no discount, and TAM airline. Let's go register the seats now. We'll complete the first row and two more seats in the second row. Before the physical insertion of each line, the corresponding rule will be executed according to the flight seat char that we've chosen. So, the transaction on the server will validate the data of the first line where seat location will be empty and the next step will execute the first rule because seat chart is A. And then it will change the seat location to window and immediately save the line in the table. Then, it'll do the same with the second line. It'll validate all the fields, seat char will have an empty value, and then it'll execute the corresponding before insert rules, which in this case will be the second one, changing the value of flight seat location to middle, and will immediately save the second line in the flight seat table and so it'll continue with the other lines. We can see that the location was correctly assigned. But, could we have conditioned these rules to on after insert? Let's make this change in Genexus and see what happens in this case. Let's change the flight we've just created and add a new seat to it, 3A. Now let's see how the flight looks. The seat we've just registered has an empty location why is that? Because the triggering event on after insert is executed after the record has been saved in the corresponding table, which is already too late to assign a value to an attribute. As we mentioned before, the last available moment to assign values is before insert, before the header or each line have been saved. So, we could use on after insert if we needed, for example, to call another object from the KB, only by sending it the header or line identifier for that object to go to the corresponding table, that of the header or the line, and there find it, the header or the line, and extract from there all the information it needs from the record to do whatever it has to do with it. To do so, we must be sure to call that object after inserting the header or line, as appropriate, on after insert. So, if we wanted to print a list with the details of a flight every time a new one is inserted, would we use on after insert? We could, but here the procedure will only be able to print the header data because the lines have not been manipulated at all, let alone inserted. They don't exist yet in the seating table. If that didn't matter to us because the print flight procedure would only print data from the flight header, it would still be a bad idea to invoke it on after insert because we must take into account that at that moment the data is still not secure in the table because the commit has not been executed. This means that if there was a power failure or an error in the validation of any of the following fields, in other words, those of lines, the recording would be undone. So the list would have been generated with information that actually no longer exists. To make sure we're working with information that's already secure in the database, we have the on after complete event, which takes place after the commit. In this case, it'll go to the flight table to find the record corresponding to the sent flight ID 
and to the flight seat table to find all the records of that flight ID, which are all its entries. What would happen if we invoked on after level of an attribute of the lines? This will happen immediately before the commit, so the records will be saved in the tables but not yet validated. So, if when you finish printing the flight information there's a power outage and the commit has not been performed, the header and lines will be removed from the database. Now suppose the following rule was declared. What flight seat ID and flight seat char values would Genexus send if there were n seats on the second level? This rule doesn't make sense. It's functionally incorrect. At the after complete moment, the values of the header attributes are still in memory, unlike the attributes of the second level, whose values were lost because we already left it. This video shows examples of before insert and after insert moments, which will be triggered only if we're inserting records. But we also have before update and after update in case we're modifying them, and before delete and after delete in case we're deleting them. There are other triggering moments that will not be studied in this course. If you're interested, you can learn more about this topic in the next level course.